Hello everyone, it's our aim to bring the, the training, CCM training to you uh, rather than you have to travel around the world uh, and so what we're going to do in the next, it'll be about the next 20-25 minutes so bear with me, is a look at our stone coatings. So you're going to look at me for the next minute or so, after that we're going to focus and you'll just see my wonderfully manicured fingers pointing to different things on this, um, on this board here and we'll discuss all of the attributes of the portfolio, our stone coating portfolio. So really we're going to cover everything, everything that you need to, to know. So uh, this is a recorded video, so if you want to go and make yourself a cup of tea and come back, it will be 20-25 minutes of your time. It is, we'll, we'll call it a masterclass. So let's now look at the uh, different coatings. We're now going to zoom in onto our working area. And we're going to start off at the bottom here. We're going to start off with our, our, it is our 7654, and I've jokingly called it a Cinderella coating. Now, this coating is really underestimated. It is a, a coating that we use for cars, and it's fantastic for bathrooms. The reason I've put it in here in the stone coating is that some people will not have understood the, the attributes. This coating, water-based silicon dioxide dilutable. You can mix it, make it a little stronger, a little weaker. We promote it at uh, 3%. three uh, percent. So you, you can have the concentrate and dilute it to your needs. But this is 3%. The reason that it, it's in here as a stone coating is it works as a standalone stone coating. When you apply it to stone you'll see, hopefully in this video here, that it's invisible. So this has got coating on this area has got a coating on, in the middle here, I'll show you in a second, has no coating. So, we know it is invisible, so that's a great attribute. The second thing is that for, so you can use it as a standalone stone coating, it's not the most durable, it's not the uh, most long-lasting, uh, but, and you, but you, can, you can use it, as I say, as a stone coating, but the main thing is for bathrooms, and shower areas, it's fantastic because you can apply this onto the uh, shower tiles, that's its main job, as a hydrophobic, easy clean uh, surface on shower tiles, but the main thing is it also seals the grout and stops the grout becoming uh, waterlogged. So very important. So we're going to start off with here, and as I say, we'll see, it's, it's hydrophobic, that is the non-coated area, so we can prove that it's, it's invisible. So, our standard, easiest, lowest cost, spray on anything, uh, water coat, uh, uh, stone coating. But then we're going to move over to our new range here. Again, in undetectable, and we, this is, we're calling it our monument stone coating. Why is it a monument stone coating? You'll see, by the way, that it, ha the, it has a slightly higher contact angle than the... Uh, 7654. You can see that is if I roll it off, this won't bead off the same way. So, why is it a monument's coating? Very simple. If you want to coat a monument, you want the coating to be invisible. So you imagine that you're outside a parliament building in, in, in England or wherever. The first thing that the people who deal with monuments will say can I take it off? Because they're always worried about something on the monument. And this is just a surface coating. So we're talking infinitesimally thin layer. So that's great. Is it breathable? Yes, it's breathable. Uh, what are the main attributes? Well, it will protect the monument with a super durable coating. It's invisible. But the main thing is that if you do put, and we can't show it in here in this video, we don't, just don't have the time. Uh, if you were to use paints and so on uh, uh, on here, or put red wine on, or the usual staining agents, they don't leave a stain. And if somebody uses graffiti on this surface, you can remove it without any blemishing or ghosting. Now that's really important for monuments. Uh, but the main thing is that this, when you put it onto a monument, you spray your graffiti, use the pen, you come and clean it. You will have to use a graffiti removing agent, but it's not a problem. But you will not see anything. 
very significant in that respect. Okay, so, and of course it, you could use that around swimming pools, around buildings, it's a water-based uh, spray-on coating, um, you can apply that by spray roller, whatever you like, it's very easy to apply. So we're now going to move over to a new coating for all of you, and this is our 623, and it's a water-based coating. Now, we've got a great uh, coating in our 620, penetrative coating. Why introduce another one? Right. The penetrative coating comes as a standalone coating. We know it works wonderfully. It's been used extensively. But it's fixed. You have it as it comes. This coating here comes as a concentrate. And you mix it uh, between... You can actually use it as a pure coating if should you wish to and in, in very simply if if you use it as a pure out of the the, the, the the tin coating it's like the 620 it has a very very deep penetration but why would you use it against the 620 it's it actually it gives it does actually give you stronger stain resistance in its pure form uh, so if you would just take it out of the cans put it onto the the, the, the surface you will, you will get good stain resistance. But here we have it at five, uh, a ratio of one to five. Now you'll see it's slightly darker. So we've gone one to five, then there's nothing on here, you'll see. One to five, this slightly darker. I don't know if you can make it out, I can see it. Hopefully you can see it on the film, uh, on the video. That is one to 10. That's probably the most common ratio. And then over here, we've got one to 30. So what are the different characteristics? So here we have, if that was red wine, olive oil, and so on and so forth, um, we will find that there'll be hardly any blemishing when we're left behind. That will penetrate that will penetrate in, in a similar way to the 620. Uh, not quite as much. The 620 is really highly penetrative. It's the nature of it. Um, so this will penetrate, should we say, four mil millimeters into this absorbent surface, this tile. At this point, I'll just explain. The reason that we use tile is that it's consistent. If I, we're going to look at some stone later on. If I use a lot of different surfaces, substrates, there's no consistency. Tile, the reverse side of tile is perfect for, for testing because it's very absorbent and we can see the changes in colour uh, nice and clearly. So, if I use it, that's the pure uh, coating, it will penetrate three to four millimetres, which is more than enough, and, but it's slightly darker, which is fine because if you have a whole surface and it's all coated, then you don't notice. It's only if you do half and half. This one here is, as I say, one to 10. If I put red wine, and we're talking leaving it for hours and hours and hours, that's why we're not doing it now. If I put red wine on here uh, and olive oil, I, can, um, I will get virtually no staining. On this one here, I will get a little bit of staining. But I'm going to get excellent uh, hydrophobicity. It's going to penetrate about two to three millimeters. I've diluted it, it's less penetrative. But it's going to go two to three millimeters. So we know that because if we drill down, we'd find that after two to three millimeters, the water will start to penetrate. If I drilled two to three mil, which is significant, uh, the, if I drill, uh, as I say, beyond uh, three millimeters, the water will start to go in, but three mil, which is more than sufficient, uh, it, uh, it is still protective. And on here, this is the one to 30, you can see hardly any color change. It will give a little bit of uh, protection against, um, against staining from oil, red wine, which is great, but this, uh, say only, it penetrates one to two millimeters. Again, that takes a long time to wear away 
because these are these are for surfaces that get a lot of wear and tear. It takes a long time for you to wear uh, two millimeters off a piece of stone. If this was put in a driveway, it would take you, and a lot of people are going going by. It's going to take you probably ten years to wear two millimeters of, of tile with just general uh, abrasion. So six two three. It gives you good uh, hide verbicity. It gives you a lot of uh, uh, oil retention, uh, oil and uh, red wine protection, comparative to, to the 620, and it is very versatile. Now, these were only, it takes about uh, this t should be seven days before you subject it to maximum usage. I only did this uh, yesterday, so it's still not fully, fully cured. And in fact, you'll see here that the, this is, it's not absorbing into it, but this has a lower contact angle than here because this is cured, as I say, this is only, only done uh, yesterday. This, uh, these have dried out more quickly, which is an interesting, in fact, because that is very, very uh, stain resistant. Hardly any water uptake. We've, we've, uh, we've tested this extensively, but very flexible. That's the beauty of this with, with uh, stain resistant characteristics. Right, moving over to the 620. The 620 is a fixed product. We can't dilute it. Uh, e exceptionally good uh, penetrative characteristics. Uh, we've known, we've, we know from this. Um, it is really just a hydrophobic coating. This, if somebody said to me, I need some, a little bit of protection against general oils and things being dropped on it, it's undoubtedly this coating. If, if you want just high verbicity and you don't want flexibility and you want exceptionally high performance, then it's this coating here, the 620. Used extensively. Uh, we've got lots and lots of data on this. A little bit, it, it's got easy clean characteristics, but I would not su suggest to anybody that it's gonna give you any significant uh, protection against oils and staining unbelievable hydrophobic uh, uh, protection. So we've moved here from our uh, 7654 water-based, very easy. We've gone through our monument protection. That's the only one I would really recommend as for specifically for monuments, statues and things like that, uh, because it's just got all of the things that you, you could possibly want. Then we've gone to highly versatile water-based coatings, not dangerous goods, you can dilute it to match your particular needs. And then high performance, penetrative uh, coating. Um, well, this will go, the, the coating on there will have gone all the way through here. So that is a good five mil. That's, and again, extensive testing shows that that's highly hydrophobic. We're now going to come over to our, we'll call it our specialist coating. So we've coat, we can coat any piece of stone here with an invisible coating over here, slightly visible here. Uh, but now we're coming to our specialist coating. We've got it at 50%. Now that 50% dilution is alcohol, 100% alcohol or IPA, mixed with the same ratio of 704. What do we get? It, this is a very absorbent surface and so this will absorb inside the stone and it will give us really excellent hydrophobicity and strong wear characteristics because it's a massively durable coating. So, but it will also give us easy clean characteristics and degree of uh, anti-graffiti protection. So if somebody puts the graffiti on there, it will be easier to get off. Not like the monument protection, but as you'll see from the, this, it's visible. You can see the color change. So that is, so if you've got a monument, the people will not want this because it changes the color. Well, say will not want it, that they may be less prone to, to want it. Here we have it as a 100%. Now, you'll see that these are both matte. I hope you can see from the lights there. These are both matte. 
If I applied 100% to, as I've done onto a more dense stone, it becomes shiny. So that's, that is 100% on here. It's quickly gone through because it's so absorbent. When I put it onto this marble, it is very, very shiny because it's not penetrating into the marble and you've got a super glossy surface, both 100%. That's really important to recognize. Now, on here, I'm gonna get, uh, again, a lot of a massive hydrophobicity, wear resistance, it's gone inside the stone. And this, this technology is super hard. It's also, um, as you may have seen from the other, other videos, very, very heat resistant, over a thousand degrees, and it still performs. That is significant when you're coating a building and somebody says, well, if there's a fire, you don't want the whole building to go up in flames. This will not burn. So that's very significant. So if I put wine, olive oil on here, I won't get any staining. But I'm in the matte zone. If I put black marker on here, you'll see what happens later on. The marker will be relatively difficult to get off. If I put black marker on here, you'll see in a minute, it will be very easy to get off. Same concentration. But we're doing different things at the moment. Somebody says, I, want, I, I don't want a shiny surface. I want matte, okay. But I want easy to clean, hydrophobicity. If that was red wine, olive oil, lemon juice, no staining on here. But because this is absorbent, you will, if this was paint, spray paint, it will come off more easily than, as we'll see later on, with the, um, with the marker. On here, we've come halfway. We've put one coat of 50% on. That's acting like a bit like a primer. And we've put, after about 10 minutes, we've put uh, one layer of uh, full fat, 100%. And you will see it's slightly glossy. Just slightly glossy. If I waited if I waited overnight and put, or after a couple of hours, put one layer at 50% and then put um, one layer of 100% on, it would be glossier. Because it, this is still semi-absorbent. But that gives you some idea. So we've gone from matte to, to glossy. Then here, we've got two layers. So that is the original I've put one layer on, waited uh, two hours, and put another layer on. And there you've got super glossy. Right. Why would you want to have super glossy? Well, some people like glossy. It also depends upon which part of the world you're in. Some people say, I always want glossy. In Europe, people say, I like matte. But if you want super glossy, you get... So here we're going to put down our marker. Put it on here. We'll also show hydrophobicity now because I'm not going to be picking this up again. So here we've got water, water, it could be red wine, put a bit more on there. This is um, immediately absorbent and here. Okay. The glossy surface, superb uh, graffiti removal. No graffiti, no staining, end of story. It just will not happen course it will absorb here. This will be very easy to get the graffiti off. Any sort of, sort of graffiti we can get that off easily. Normally we, we would uh, we'd just use alcohol today but you would if it was heavy paint you'd probably use a, um, uh, a graffiti wipe or something like that. Bio one. This will be harder to get off. Here really hard to get the graffiti off. But if it was this will give you massive hydrophobicity, a little bit of stain proofing, red wine, olive oil. This will give you excellent stain proofing, red wine, olive oil. This will again give just exceptional pr uh, uh, protection, red wine. And here, zero staining. It'll just wipe straight off in a minute, as you'll see. So, 
why would you use these? Why would you want these different characteristics? Okay, let's say we're uh, dealing with a, a company and they, they've got a lovely forecourt, and somebody comes along and they, they have a corner for everybody comes out and has a cigarette and they have the sandwiches outside and they sit there and they they drop the pizza on and and it's just a they just don't want any staining. So we'd say I wouldn't use fifty percent because I'm going to get uh, some staining. It's really just hydrophobic, massively, lasts forever, lasts for a few years and years and years, uh, not forever, but years and years and years of hydrophobicity. But you say, I want stain protection, easy clean characteristics, uh, but I want it matte. Okay, here we go, that's your option, 100%. You won't get red wine, you won't get olive oil, you won't get any marks from pizza. It's gone inside the stone, so it'd be very, very durable. They go, but really I want, I also want some graffiti protection and I want even more stain protection. You say then, well, you have two options. You either go for 50% uh, for primer and slightly glossy, or you go with a full glossy layer. And I would choose this one here. Uh, because you're with the thinner coating, you're putting a little, you, well not a little, you're allowing it to penetrate quite deep into the stone because it's diluted and then you're finishing off with the top, you're bonding and you bond the two together and you've got the best of both worlds. The only consideration with this is slipperiness. Uh, when you get water on top of this it's going to be quite slippery. So here is going to be less slippery so in that particular problem scenario, I would be going 50% uh, undercoat, and then, so you do the, do the area, just spray it on, roller it on, however you like to do it, it's very easy to use. And then I would um, put the top coat on, just walk away. It's walkable on after, it's best 24 hours, technically 12, but I prefer to leave it longer. So, that's our general scenario. Uh, here, that by the way is um, just a 50% 50, 50 you, can, you can see there. Um, that, that, that is so useful uh, for massively, uh, massive hydro, hydrophobicity protection. Why would you use, why not use this one or this one? Well, depends where, you, where we're shipping to. That's, that is a solvent-based product, so you're paying, you have to pay shipping. It's a different thing. It does make it darker than that. Uh, it gives more stain protection than these two, but it's, it's all about shipping. So, there you go. Uh, it doesn't penetrate as much as this one, but even though it will penetrate um, two to three mil, uh, when it's diluted at 50%, it goes in. So, this is why we're doing this. So, you, you've got every option I can imagine just there in terms of penetrative. So, we're going from penetrative matte, that's relatively matte, to glossy. Right, let's come to this. This is the, um, it's a marble. We put it on here, it will always, even if it's, that is 50% down there, if I've used the 50% mixture, which I'm going to do in a minute, I'm still going to get a slight gloss. 100% one layer gives me real shiny gloss. If I did the outside of a building, it's going to look superb. So, what are the strengths, what are the weaknesses on marble? The strength is, it will protect the marble against any staining. That has to be great. So it's going to protect the marble against all staining, Red wine, olive oil, lemon juice, brilliant. When it's in 100%. The downside is that when you put it onto these surfaces, uh, even if I put 50% as a, as, as a primer, it doesn't absorb as readily. And so if, if I scratch this surface with a sharp implement, I'm going to scratch it through and I'll actually take off the top. Um, 
And fingernails are fine, you know, you can scratch it all day. If I can abrade it lightly, that's fine. But if I take a strong, strong implement, uh, it's going to scratch through the top. And there is nothing penetrating. So if, if this, for example, if I scratch through the top there, I'm still protected by that 50% layer that's sitting underneath there. We don't get that with marble. So, in my view, marble walls, vertical walls, showers, if you want glossy and easy to clean, it's perfect. Shower floors, mm, well, apart from the fact it's going to be quite slippery because it's, it's very, very shiny, but you, you drag things across, across it, you're going to get scratches. Uh, so, in my view, I would, go in, I would go more for a penetrative coating. This will penetrate into marble, of course. But so it has its, its fantastic attributes. So uh, we'll come back to, to clean these uh, in, terms of, um, in terms of graffiti in a minute. I want that to actually dry a bit. I don't want somebody to say, oh, it's, uh, it's, uh, they've only just pushed it on and it will come off anyway. Right, we're now going to move over to graffiti. So here we go. Uh, and it's this point it's quite worth noting that here we've got our 707654 we're starting to notice that it's um, it's a little bit absorbed into there uh, that's exactly what we would expect as I say it's, it's just for shower screens and things like that it's, but it is it, it's not averted it wouldn't be we wouldn't say this was the the perfect use for um, for the floors of, of shower screens and things like that, but for the walls, absolutely brilliant. And when, and when you put more on, so every time you put it on, you're gonna get a buildup. So, we're now going to come over to our uh, 7626. Seven, this is a standalone graffiti protection product. This is a, G, seven, a 704 is a multi-usage product. All this does, I say all it does, does it exceptionally well, is give, gives exceptional performance against graffiti. Now, it's an upgrade on our previous graffiti coating which needed two coats always. But what, one of the things that prompted us to do this video is the fact that we wanted to clarify, we've had several requests about this, this coating, we wanted to clarify the parameters, what it will do well, what it won't do well. So we started off and we take, this is the most absorbent substrate that we can find, really. It's super, super absorbent, which is perfect for showing what we, the problems or the issues. This is a, a layer of uh, 7626. Now, I'm just going to put on here, this is 7626. Just had that mixed up earlier. Right. Now, if I put this on here, good layer, not a massive amount. Right. If I put that on there, you would think, oh, great, I've done a great job. I'll walk away. It's going to end up with a nice, glossy glossy appearance, job done. Not exactly. On this particular surface, it will be, if you come back tomorrow morning, it will look like this. It's too absorbent to do in one coat. So let's, that's really, really important. That's why we're doing this training. This is too absorbent to coat in one coat. We'll look at some surfaces in a minute where one coat is more than sufficient. So, we will get, you're not really interested in hydrophobic protection. Uh, you will get some, state, this will give you some degree of, um, of uh, protection. But it's really, really, on this surface, you've got two options. And the two options are as follows. For this to be efficient, it's got to be a little bit glossy, even though we do the matte version, but it's still got to be, you have to, it's always, going, by the way, it's always going to give you a colour change, so that is a given, 
has to give a colour change. So here we've got two coats, one on top of the other. Right. And you can see that it doesn't really want to, to take the, the uh, marker pen. It's a permanent marker. Here we've used 704 at uh, approximately 25%, so it's really, really diluted, and we've used that as a primer. And we've done, imagine that you're doing a wall and it's uh, 10 meters long and 2 meters high, typical. And it's a, it's a stone wall. Uh, by the time that you've finished putting the 704 on, so you start at the far end, you put the 704 on, you spray it or however, that will absorb in, into the, the, the brickwork. And then you can come back and put the, the new coating on top. And that's what we've got here. So this is with a primer level and one coat of uh, 7626. So this is two coats of 726. This is a primer 704 with 726. You'll see that they've, they, they work pretty much identically. Now, why would you use this coating against this coating? Right. So we'll just take some water. I've got some water here in the jug. And right. You will not remove so, uh, graffiti from here with water. It won't do it. It will remove in seconds with alcohol, which I'll show you in, in a minute. Any graffiti will just take it straight off. Here, this is the graffiti which is undercoated, shall we say. It's matte. It's sort of coming off. A lot of energy. But it's not... I've got it off now. It's gone. Yeah. The only thing is a little bit, bit of blue from here. But there's a lot of energy inside there taken. Here, I've gone... This is the one that's coated properly. And this is what you want with this particular coating. You want ease of clean. And so, with water... I just wipe it off. It comes straight off. That's what we're promoting with this. It's ease of removal of graffiti. So, what is the world's most, not the world's most, but what is an exceptionally good anti-graffiti coating? This one. It's easy, easy to remove. That one, you never forget it. So, let's have a look, come back at these ones here. Now I'm going to take a little bit of uh, alcohol. Should we put something on there? Don't know if you guys, that's just alcohol. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. So, I've removed the graffiti with the alcohol. Same here. Just need the alcohol. Just ordinary alcohol, it's gone. So that's a great graffiti remover. But this one, we're saying we can remove graffiti with water. Now, that sounds fantastic. It is fantastic. Let's then look at this in our typical pragmatic manner. And by the way, there's some wood here just to show as well. We'll remove that in a second. I, I, I don't want to do it just now because I want it to absorb so people don't say, oh, it's just a... Now, what do we have here? We have two solutions for graffiti. This one is a, based on a silicone technology. On stone like this, you're never going to rub it off. It is really, 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 really durable. Because it's embedded in that. So we've, it's absorbed a little, and on here, which is the primer coat, you're not going to rub it off. But, I'll just remove this by the way. I can use water again, because I'm just going to... So I've got it off the wood here. Now if I rub, 
here on the wood, I'm not going to rub it off. If I rub it here on the, the wood, I'm not going to rub it off because it's an absorbent surface, it's gone through. But this technology is also suitable for harder surfaces like stainless steel or metals and plastics. When you put it onto those surfaces, you do get the same easy clean uh, characteristics. But if I were to put the seven, this coating here, which I will do just to show you, I hardly need to put very much on because it's not going to absorb like it did here. But I'm not going to get the same adhesion because that's a comparatively smooth surface and this is a, a, an open absorbent surface. I'm not going to get that off. I can rub and rub and rub. But this one here, it will not go down inside as readily. And so I could ultimately start to lift that layer up off there. I'd have to work very, very hard to do it. So I could lift the layer off there. It's not going to adhere as much, but I'm going to get this, still get the fantastic ease of clean graffiti protection that you want here. So back to what we're offering. We're offering fantastic removal, the easy clean removal of graffiti. It's, it is visible. When you're using it on stainless steel, plastics and things like that, one has to be, be aware that it, will, um, it can be uh, pushed off more easily. So that's the, the trade-off there. So we're going to put these to one side now and actually look at um, some further assessment on a piece of stone here. So excuse me. So, here's our working. And the reason that we've chosen this piece of stone is it gives us a lot of different options. So, on the stop, top here, we've got it. It's already got some sort of protection on. I've checked, it's not an anti-graffiti protection. It's come from a company, I don't know what it is. It's not got our coatings on at all. Okay, so, it's a concrete composite. Let's say that you're working on this surface here to start with. So it's at the outside of a, uh, outside of a, could be a building, a modern building, anything you like. So what are we going to do if we want to protect this? So the, the, the client says, I just want hydrophobicity. All I want is protection against water. I don't want water to go inside and make my building damp. Okay, we've got several options. We can use a nanoscale coating, monument coating, nah, too expensive for this Do particular project. Do I want project. any stain, stain proofing? No, I don't need any stain proofing. Okay. Uh, do I want to have, um, and you're in, uh, you're in South America and you want to get a, a lowish cost coating and all you're looking for is hydrophobicity. Yes. So I would say, this is a coating for you. Water-based, we ship out the water-based coating, you put it on, massive hydrophobicity, easy to apply, great, that's it. Okay, this client here says, I want, um, I want hydrophobicity and some stain protection. I, said, I would say to him, ah, if you just wanted hydrophobicity and you're just around the corner here in Germany, uh, I would recommend our 620 because it gives you great hydrophobicity, uh, but you want some stain protection. Okay. How much stain protection do you want, sir? I want just stain protection from, uh, I'm near a restaurant and the kids come out and um, sometimes they have uh, some drinks and they get spilt on the wall. Okay. So you don't read, need massive stain protection? No. So I would recommend this at 10%. That will give you good stain protection against, um, against your red wine, Coca-Cola, uh, somebody throws a pizza at the wall, maybe not in Germany, but in other countries. And so, I want stain protection here. Okay, so, great. The next thing is, you go, some guy says, right, 
uh, as was the case, we did the one of our um, Stephen, if you're watching this, did a project for the uh, a tennis court in England. The, the the demand was, I want super good, high trophicity, massive wear characteristics, and I want deep penetration into that stone, and I want to go in really go in a long, long way. But I'm um, only after high trophicity because this is an outdoor tennis tennis court. It gets filled with water. I want to be able to brush all the water away and I want it to dry quickly and so we have the, 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 uh, the next, um, so the next player can come on. Okay, great. This is your, this is the coating that you want. That's going to go down 10 mil if you put enough on, last you for 50 years, that's everything that you could possibly want. Okay, next scenario. So we just talked penetrative there. Now, next scenario is somebody comes along and says, okay, I've got my, this, this coating here. Um, the coating has to be uh, resistance against uh, staining, has to be hydrophobic, but it has to be invisible. Right, okay. And it's got to be stain resistant, hydrophobic, maybe protected against some graffiti, uh, but it must be invisible. Right, we've only got really got one option, and that is these, this coating here. And so that will go on, it's a water-based coating, no change of colour, give me stain protection, give me anti-graffiti protection, nanoscale, so that is my option. Right, the next client comes along and says, right, I want, I'm coating a building, and it is in the middle of the city and it takes massive wear and tear and I have to clean the graffiti all day, every day, there's a graffiti team come in and I want to, really my main target is protection against graffiti. <coughs> right sir, you have two options. Um, the, and it doesn't matter if it's visible or not, no it doesn't matter if it's visible or not, it's just an industrial area, uh, okay. So we have Two, two options. We can go with our 704 coating. Our 704 coating will be massively, massively durable. And, uh, and you said you wanted it on the pavement as well. Yes, I want it on the pavement. I want people to be able to walk over it. I want to be able to do graffiti removal. It's a really gets hit by contamination and there's people peeing on it and it's just horrible. We need heavy, heavy duty uh, daily cleaning and you have to be able to walk on it yes you have to be able to walk on it and people are lying against it 704 is the answer we take the 704 we put it down into put a primer layer on and then a top layer and then that people can walk on it they can abrade it they can do what they like and we can remove the graffiti but we're going to use alcohol to remove the graffiti or a, or a graffiti removing wipe. It's just going to be one wipe over and it's gone. The next guy comes along and says, ah, the local council will not allow anybody to use any graffiti chemicals. If we're a green council, we just have to be able to clean with water. Okay, we only have one option, which is a great option, which is our 7626. So the graffiti will come on, you wipe it on, uh, put the 726 on, people come along, they do the graffiti every night, the next day somebody comes along with a bucket of water and a microfiber, or if it's thick paint then, and it's been on for a few days you might need to use a pressure washer and that will remove the paint. So there is the only option there, if you can't use uh, any sort of chemical of any sort, even if it's just bioethanol, then it's that 7626. The same guy comes along and says, ah, I've got a, there's also a, uh, so that's great on the stone, uh, I've got a facade that goes from stone to plastic and metal and then back to stone. Can I use the 7626? Yeah, you can use the 726. Uh, it's going to be, um, but I'm going to alert you, sir, that the adhesion on the, the, the plastic and the metal is not as strong as on the stone. I said, do people walk along it and bash against it? No, nobody walks. The only people that go there are the people putting the graffiti on, on, on 
it's there's nobody there that's uh, um, taking their bags across it. They're walking over, doing graffiti, and walking away. That would be fine if it was on a on a, a uh, an area that was constantly being abraded, and people were in a tube station, and people were brushing up against it. You might get some delamination, so I'd be alerting the person to that. Uh, and perhaps we're overstressing that, but we want don't want people to be disappointed. So there, that's it. So those are the options on that particular one. For here, for example, this is the shiny side. So we've gone from there, and we the person says, right, I want to. Uh, have um, protection, a penetrative protection that goes through this stone. My first question, it should be your first question, so we've gone from open pore to this shiny side, is, and if I look carefully on here, I can see a line. I would want to know, is there any coating on there? Because if I say my water-based penetrative coating, mm, what is the nature of this? We know it's not, I've tried before, it's not graffiti protected. Doesn't seem to be highly hydrophobic, but there seems to be, there's definitely something on top of there. So, I would want to know, and I would do my testing, but it looks as though that's pretty much gone inside now. But we'll see. But that was my first question. So this is a useful thing to be, we've always got to say, what is on top of the substrate? Here I've tested, I know there's nothing on the side. It, it looks like that the water-based and the 620 may be an option, but we should be alert the fact that there is something that's on there that's different. I can see it just here, it's shiny, it's glossy, why? And you need to ask exactly the same question. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I hopefully have covered all the possible uses of uh, stone in that last 20-25 minutes and I told you it would be a long haul. Uh, let's hope that this has worked out for you and that you are better informed. So we're always here to field questions, but I think we've covered quite a bit of territory there. So thanks for your time. Bye now.